Welcome to Tinkernut.com's video cast. I'm Daniel, and today is the last day to vote for the 2008 Weblog Awards. I really appreciate everybody's support so far. You guys have been great. I even had somebody send in a video of their dog voting, which was pretty awesome. I'll post that tomorrow along with the results of the awards. So uh, if you guys can get out there and vote one last time, and remember that knowledge is power in Tinkernut09. Anyway, moving right along, um, as most of you know, last Friday Microsoft released Windows 7. If you haven't had a chance to get a copy, if uh, you refer to my last video, I showed you how you could, how you could download it over torrents, or you could just uh, look in the video description, and I've got a link to the ISO files as well as how to get a key, so be sure to check that out. So in this video, what I'm going to show you how to do if you don't want to commit an entire computer to Windows 7 and you don't want to risk screwing anything up, I'm going to show you how you can install Windows 7 virtually on your computer on a virtual PC, which is also made by Microsoft. So moving right along, the first thing that you want to do is open up a Google search page and do a search for Microsoft Virtual PC and click on the first resulting link. It should take you to the Microsoft website where you can download a free copy of Virtual PC. And since it's from the Microsoft website, you shouldn't have to worry about any viruses or anything like that. Now this assumes that you've already downloaded the Windows 7 ISO file from Microsoft and that you have a key, uh, a Windows 7 product key. And assuming that, go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'm calling mine Windows 7. For the operating system, I'm just going to select Other since Windows 7 isn't on there. And I'm going to change the RAM. Typically, you want to put one gigabyte because uh, that's the minimum requir requirements, but I just put 512. And then you want to create a new hard drive. I'm setting mine to 30,000 megabytes or th 30 gigabytes. And then just click Finish. And then you should see Windows 7 up there, so just click Start. And then in the menu, go to CD and Capture ISO Image and just navigate to the Windows 7 ISO image that you downloaded. And it should boot to it as if it were an actual CD. So now this is the Windows 7, the new fancy Windows 7 startup logo. And uh, this is Windows starting up. So when, when you'll notice that once you click on the virtual PC, it gives you this page. This just tells you that it's going to capture your mouse and to let it go, you have to hit the right alt button. So that's the alt button on the right side of your space bar. So I'm just going to click next for English and then install now. And it should start the setup. Um, I'm going to accept the license terms and click next. I'm going to choose custom and I'll just leave everything as it is and click next. This is going to install it to that 30 gigabytes. So once it's through installing you should uh, see this page to create a username. You can put whatever you want and if you want to put in a password you can do that and then just put in your product key and uh, then you can set the time. I'm going to choose home network for my network settings and now this want to skip this for now. That sets up your Windows Media Player with music and stuff like that, but there's a bug that if you try to do that, it's going to delete your music or corrupt it. So we want to skip that for now. So it should finish installing after that, and this is Windows 7. And this is what it looks like. You can see that it's got the little toolbar ribbon at the top for all the programs. And this is the taskbar at the, at the bottom. You can actually pin programs to the taskbar so that if you close them, you can just open it right back up or you can unpin it. If you right click you'll see uh, gadgets and then how you can personalize windows and I'm gonna choose a different background. You can see that some of these options have several backgrounds. These actually change. You can uh, uh, set this and it'll keep changing the background. You can right click and choose next background to actually change it. You can also see that if you move a window to the left or to the right, it will snap in place. Um, it'll gray off that little section of the screen and it'll snap it to that section of the screen. If you want it to be full screen, just drag it up to the top. 
And uh, some of the other options, if you do a search like in Windows Vista, it actually takes up the entire start menu as opposed to just a portion of it, which I thought was, was really handy. Well, you can actually see stuff when it, when it does that. So now I'm going to show you how to fix that bug that I mentioned earlier that deletes your MP3 files. Um, what you want to do is go to the link listed below. I've got it in my favorites here and it's at arstechnica.com and it just gives you direct links to where you can download the Windows 7 update which does have a fix uh, for that mp3 music media issue that I mentioned earlier. So just go ahead and download that update whether you have 32-bit or 64-bit and restart your computer. So I didn't go into too much detail about how to use Windows 7 because I'm still messing around with it. And with it being on virtual PC, you don't have to worry about it screwing up other parts of your computer. So this is a pretty good way to test out Windows 7, get a feel for it, see what it's all about. And if you find any cool stuff that I didn't mention, please feel free to list that in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching this video. For more, go to tinkernut.com.